Okay, so alpha, beta, and gamma decay. Okay, so these are the three kinds of decay that are in the HSC chem course. Uh, and we're just going to talk uh, very briefly about each one uh, and, um, and what they're all about. So, an unstable isotope will decay, and dependent on the sort of imbalance that's going on in its atomic core, it will decay in a particular way. Uh, so, alpha, beta, and gamma decay are three kinds of uh, spontaneous uh, nuclear decay. And each of them represents an energetic emission from the atomic core, which is also known as radiation. So, all of these are examples of radiation. Alright, and let's have a look at the first kind. Alpha decay. Uh, is where a very heavy nucleus, or well, a heavy nucleus, uh, ejects from its core. So let's just imagine this is a core made up of lots of protons and neutrons. It ejects out uh, what's known as an alpha particle, which is uh, colors again. It's a core. Core of two protons and two neutrons. So that's what gets uh, gets ejected. Two protons and two neutrons uh, get ejected at speed from the core. So that's going to change what's going on inside the core. Uh, it's going to. This is now going to have a new atomic number. It's going to have a new atomic weight. It's going to be two less of both uh, in here, so minus two and minus two, and it's ejected this particle uh, at speed. So let's uh, let's look at an example of this happening. Uh, there is an isotope known as americium, like America, uh, because it was discovered in America. Uh, americium two four one. So it's got an uh, it's got an atomic weight of two four one. It's got an atomic number of ninety five. Uh, so it looks a bit like this. So atomic number down here. I uh, should have said this earlier, but it's fine now. And atomic weight up here. So it weighs two forty one. It is element ninety five. That means it's americium. All right. Uh, just gonna get some more space here. Americium 241, and it can spontaneously undergo alpha decay. So that goes to, uh, it's going to be something with two less of an atomic number, so it's going to be atomic number 93, uh, which if you look on your periodic table of the elements is Neptunium, NP, and it's also going to have two less atomic weight, so, sorry, four less atomic weight. So, because it's losing, remember, two, uh, must well put this in here, uh, two protons and two neutrons. Now, two protons and two neutrons are, in fact, a helium nucleus. A helium nucleus is made up of two neutrons. Let's change the color. And two protons. That is, in fact, a helium. So, a helium with a weight of four atomic number two. So atomic number, number of protons, weight, total number of protons plus neutrons. Uh, now this is lost four weight. So it's Neptunium 237. So what's our total result? Well the Americium has ejected a helium nucleus and that's changed what it is. It's now a Neptunium 237 uh, atom. And it's got, as well, it's emitted this helium nucleus at speed. 
So that's a typical example. This America M241, by the way, is used in smoke detectors. Uh, you may well need to know this. Uh, Uh, what it does is these alpha particles, uh, they're positively charged, by the way, they've got a 2 plus positive charge, all alpha particles do. We use it as an alpha particle source in smoke detectors. Basically, uh, those alpha particles get shot out across, kind of, um, out of the americium. There's kind of an air gap here. Uh, now, with these positive particles in the air, uh, that ionizes the air, which means that we can pass an electric current through it. But if smoke gets into the air, it wafts up into here, that stuffs up that process, and the ionization is no longer enough, and the electric current is broken, and that is a signal to the smoke detector that there's smoke in the air, and therefore it should go off and warn people. So that is how Merikiam. 241 is used in smoke detectors, and you will need to know that one. Alright, uh, but to go back to the alpha particle, which is a helium nucleus ejected at speed, uh, it's quite big in terms of uh, the kinds of things that can be emitted. It is the biggest thing uh, out of alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. So it's a big particle, it will readily smash into other particles and slow down, uh, and uh, and eventually not have any energy. And, and once once it's no longer zooming out at speed, we don't really call it an alpha particle anymore. It's just helium. It's just helium sitting around. It's not really a form of radiation if it's just gaseous helium in the air. Uh, yeah, so uh, it has low penetrative power. It's very easy to shield because of this, because it's just a helium molecule that'll smack into things. And it's got a fair bit of energy, but as long as um, it's not ingested, it poses a low risk to humans who deal with it. Uh, the skin will absorb it uh, safely. That's not a big worry. Uh, just a clue, they do get more worrying as we go along. <laughs> uh, so we'll do the beta particle next. Uh, alpha, beta, gamma, they get more dangerous in that order, gamma being the most dangerous. Alright, so beta decay is completely different again. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the tritium uh, example that I gave earlier. So. Tritium has a single proton, it's a hydrogen, uh, but it weighs three, so it's got two protons. And we were saying before that that's, that's too many, it, it's unstable. Uh, now, the way that tritium, uh, I guess we could say the way that tritium deals with that, it's, it's H3, it's, it's got an atomic number of one, it's H. Uh, the way that uh, it kind of decays, is that it says, all right, well, I've got too many neutrons. Too many neutrons. What I'm going to do is I'm going to convert a neutron into a proton. And the thing about that is that a neutron has a charge of zero, a uh, proton has a charge of plus one. Uh, so the kind of, the way of balancing this equation, this is actually how all protons were first created in the universe, but uh, and the electrons, as you'll see, is the neutron goes to a proton and hello, yep, my mic's still on, cool. Alright, uh, the neutron goes to a proton and an electron. Sorry about that technical stuff up a second ago. Alright, so, and this electron is ejected at speed, and that is beta radiation. So, beta radiation is an electron ejected at speed.
Uh, so let's have a look at tritium. What happens here? So one of its protons, sorry, one of its neutrons, uh, let's say this one, is going to go and become a proton. But in that process, it's going to generate an electron that flies out at speed, and that is beta radiation. Uh, now the total equation is going to be, uh, yeah. So we're still going to have an atomic weight of three. It's not H; it's H E now because it's got an atomic number of two. So the weight has uh, is unchanged. The atomic number has gone up one. And so it changed from hydrogen to helium, and we've also got an electron at speed, which is our beta radiation. Now, what can we say about beta radiation? Well, it's got more penetrative power than uh, than an alpha particle because it's much smaller. Uh, so now you actually do need some shielding. To protect, uh, to protect ourselves, uh, you need what do you need? Right, yeah. The energy will travel through meters of air, and uh, not much solid material. So only two millimeters of aluminium is needed to shield you from beta radiation if you're working with it. Uh, it could cause damage to unshielded skin or if you say breathed in something that was giving off beta beta radiation that could be dangerous as well uh, but it's still not too dangerous all right moving on to gamma radiation okay gamma radiation does not give off a particle so what happens is another nuclear reaction occurs and it leaves behind an atomic nucleus that's in an excited state. So, uh, got an atomic nucleus, you know, it's a mix of neutro uh, neutrons and protons, and it's got too much energy. Uh, and it's got too much energy because its configuration has changed because of another nuclear reaction. Now, it doesn't, when it undergoes gamma radiation, it doesn't eject anything, uh, but the energy is released as high frequency electromagnetic radiation. So remember that high frequency electromagnetic radiation means it's got a very short wavelength. Uh, high frequency short wavelength, if something's low frequency it's got a long wavelength. So there's this particular wavelength of radiation called gamma, gamma wave radiation uh, that is that is emitted. So it's electromagnetic, which uh, I'll just remind you is uh, the same kind of thing as light. Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Ultraviolet is a form. Uh, infrared is a form. And gamma is, is very short wavelength, high energy, high frequency electromagnetic radiation. And so, uh, yeah, gamma decay represents the conversion of excess energy in atomic core being emitted as, non, as a non-visible wavelength of light. Now, gamma radiation has very high pe penetrative power and it can damage cell components like cell walls and DNA. Uh, can actually just break those down. Uh, can damage DNA so that the cell doesn't function in the future. Can even change the sex cells inside people so it can damage their children and their children's DNA. It's the most damaging form of radiation and it requires thick metal shielding of um, centimeters and centimeters of metal, like lead, like a heavy metal. Uh, like lead to uh, to shield you. 